Hello folks, welcome to the Conflict Resolution Expert Talk Show. Today we are discussing with Anupriya, who is into behavioral science and conflict resolution. Hello Anupriya, welcome to the show. Could you please introduce yourself to the audience? I'm a behavior science and conflict resolution uh, professional. I currently work in research writing for these things, uh, but I want to transition to more research specific roles. And in the future, I see myself as a practitioner as well as researcher. I'm also a musician. I write a lot. Uh, I write on Twitter. I write about, um, you know, behavior, emotions, spirituality, personal growth. And my music uh, preference is in electronic music and hip hop. So I have a diverse range of interests. And all of these things have come to me in different doses, in different ways. Some I've attracted, some I've see, sought and gone towards. And I've had a lot of interesting experiences in life, a lot of beautiful serendipitous experiences, a lot of dramatic experiences, a lot of negative experiences. But they've all taken me closer to my purpose of um you know knowing that there is a higher truth that conflict resolution is possible if not today in a few years and that we are all agents in our relationships and our workplaces so things aren't just happening to us we have choices but obviously it's a very uh, complex journey to be able to make those choices anupriya i see your contribution in uh, division 48 can you bring more details around that the american psychological association so how it's related to conflict resolution so um conflict resolution is a very interdisciplinary field and there are people who work in it from business to politics to marketing um there's so much uh, interdisciplinary conversation in it but psychology is also one of the main foundational fields when it comes to conflict and the APA division 48 is the division that combines um basically it's peace psychology it combines psychology with conflict and it looks at what are the psychological phenomena what's the psychological research what's the psychological perspective that we can take to peace building so um i got very lucky last year with my professional life despite the pandemic i went through a downfall in april when the lockdown began and over time i picked myself up and a lot of great things came into my life the first was the apa division 48 editorial role which i got through jeremy pollock he's my mentor and uh, someone i really look up to at pollock peace building systems so as an editorial associate editor there uh, initially i just worked on curating pieces first on global peace making etc uh and the last edition i wrote a very book review of a pretty long book on multi level reconciliation so this was written by two professors and um it was i really enjoyed the holistic aspect of peace building in it basically peace is not just between governments it's about like society it's about people it's about addressing trauma it's about assessing and addressing culture it's about looking at indigenous practices alternative methods to peace building and uh, i remember there were a few chapters that really stood out to me uh, i think one was on spirituality and th- that's that's when in this summer i also uh, told the apa folks that i really want us to have a section on spirituality and peace i think that's a game changer because that's spirituality is something i'm very close to and um is just uh, i felt like it's it's a it's a section that can really do some very interesting uh justice to the existing work that say buddhism jainism or uh, maybe christianity or brahma kumaris like different alternative forms of religious and spiritual practices what they can bring to the table for peace building so i think the book kind of reinforced that there is space for looking at spirituality there's space for or uh, multicultural ways of peace looking at peace building yeah you brought a cultural aspect in your earlier discussion so how does indian culture will contribute to the conflicts when we people from india interact with the people around the globe how does it matter work mostly whoever i work with it's crazy since a year i've been working with us based organizations only in fact today my article um 
will be out on the behavioral scientist about remote work and cultures how it affects like the future of work how it's different culturally so today is a very mystical day i think for both things to happen and um yeah, that's a great question so first of all i am someone who's been exposed to american culture since a very young age i have traveled there i have family there and i have a lot of privilege so for me the cultural adjustment is actually the opposite because i i am very sensitive to organizational cultures and if i'm working somewhere it's very important for me to feel like this place is flexible in certain ways um i am from the queer community as well so the certain cultural aspects really matter to me so the, there hasn't been any major adjustment that i've had to make with these organizations rather on the contrary i've had to make more adjustment with indian organizations but i prefer to not look at it in such a black and white way also there are a lot of organizations in india which are very liberal which are very forward as well so maybe the only adjustment i've had is one can say timings of work but because th- this is flexible work as well it's not set in stone that so meetings are at night which is fine by me cuz i'm a late riser anyway um then sometimes there's things around um it it finally depends on like you need to send your work on thursday so the way i do it in the last few weeks no one cares so that flexibility aspect is great and my today's article can answer this question um in a greater way from a more research perspective with professor prithira chaudhary but in my experience i always felt safety comfort a lot of value for my own perspective my talents my observations here and in fact these are the places where i worked the longest in graduating after graduating the longest gig i had was 8 months then the pandemic began and you know there was discontinuation now i'll be completing one year with all these organizations so i would say i've been very blessed i got very lucky i hope i continue to get lucky if that's possible uh, but yeah not too much adjustment has been had to make and it felt like home always and i believe in aligning your values with the people you work with otherwise it's not possible to work with someone yeah. so what are your thoughts about spirituality with respect to conflicts everyone has a different perspective you know for some people it's religion it's rituals it's puja for me spirituality is um initially it was being able to get what you want in life like attracting things and visualizing which i again touch wood is something that's worked very well for me uh, but the older i get i started realizing that spirituality is not just about attracting what you want to your life it's about addressing your shadows your issues it's about it's a lot about oneness like recognizing that when you're in conflict with someone what is it that's triggering in me what is it that's triggering in them what do i need to do do i need to ask for what i want more address my needs do i need to draw boundaries spirituality is not just any more about what do i want how do i get it it's a lot about um understanding that suffering is a part of life you can't avoid it you can't escape it suffer what there is to suffer enjoy what there is to enjoy so my spirituality comes a lot from buddhism uh later i found advaita vedanta which i found very interesting and the idea of like you know basically you're going to life there is suffering like earlier it's all like oh spirituality is amazing always feel good feel good feel good and then shit happens and then you're like oh like what so i'm still like i had a beautiful year last year and then april again this year everything is just half hazard i'm still kind of recovering from that and just trying to accept even my own suffering um so spirituality i think is a very crazy thing and it's you can choose to believe in it don't choose to believe in it i don't think it cares because i think what's true doesn't care if you think it's true like it's the truth that your thoughts do make a difference to reality and you don't have to be perfect you can't have perfect thoughts it's impossible to always feel good and it's about um you know having like accepting that you can't be in control of everything you can always say i want this like i do this every day that like, okay god or universe whatever i want these four things to happen now how it happens when it happens i don't have control over i 
can ask and say i really hope this happens in the next 3 to 6 months short term goals are very important but if it doesn't happen i don't have too much control on it um so surrender is a big part of spirituality acceptance of suffering is a big part intention is a big part that even though you know you don't have control over everything you still have to have intention that mujhe ye chahiye at least so clarity honi chahiye and even if you don't have clarity which i very often also struggle with how do you reach clarity is a very step by step process of listening to your own gut and my gut is a very uh, sensitive thing like my stomach like when i don't feel good i feel it in my stomach so there's a body aspect also there's also somatic elements to this um and and that's where i think exercise also makes a difference the days that i do go for a run i go to the park i go to the forest i have a very different energy so yeah a lot of it's sensitivity also and i'm highly highly sensitive to to these energies so um yeah i mean i feel like i'm basically a hot mess trying to figure it out sometimes things are great and people are like wow you've done so much before i know it i crash some shit happens then i'm picking myself uh it's just like a constant process yeah well thank you thank you for sharing this you touched upon a lot many things even the self accountability awareness many things thank you yeah and i think uh, one thing i'd like to reinforce is as i mentioned i have gone through mental health struggles anxiety and um and i've always known that i'm a good person okay so that's always known but i know when i go through lows there's you you feel anger you feel irritation you feel like blaming people so um one defining aspect of these lows has been that the lows can limit your productivity your time management your energy energy is low but you still have control over your actions there is still choice within those limitations so when they say react don't respond i think it takes a lot of wisdom to take that pause and say i'll get back to this and then reclaim yourself reclaim your calmness and there's nervous system regulation that's something we're exploring these days so spirituality has as i said taught me that yeah there is suffering no shit like there is going to be a lot of suffering but how you respond to it makes a difference and that's why taking breaks is very important so that's why i believe in flexible work because as a sense of person i know i can't work 9 to 5 i can't be on calls full time i will burn out that's why i had to create a structure for myself which we can address later in the future of work part but yeah spirituality is very much around self care also you brought a great point you mentioned that our own needs play a very important role when we are into conflicts we cannot always think what other people will be thinking or what other people will say though we have a need for others well being we cannot always please them so currently multinational companies work with lot many people across the globe and every part of the culture and every part of the world have different culture so what data this organization should gather so that they build a collaborative team where everyone can openly express their ideas how do you build that psychological safety if we consider a multi year plan of 3 to 5 years to change the organization culture what all data they actually gather from the people who are working with the organizations i work with yes they are in, based in the us but they are not multinational corporations they are quite small size so what you're talking about is like a mid size large size organization you're talking about change management which requires agility and there are concepts there that i'm aware of so concepts that you know leadership in hr organizational behavior they look at those things it is something i write about uh, for pollock yes and i know transitions are difficult for everyone yeah when you're introducing a new policy take into account all the stakeholders um go through that process of back and forth of um of you know um knowing what people really want is this going to serve their needs why you're doing this don't be like biden just like take out troops from america one random day you know have a process prepare the people who are going to be affected by the change so it's obviously a process as i said 
um and when you say data i think the only data that is of use is like in a large scale organization would be qualitative would be to you know find out from people what they want how they feel etc from what i've studied that's what seems to be the right thing and and data also around how have people how much change have they been exposed to already what are their schedules like with their clients or what they do how much can they take at a time so even for transitions you don't just suddenly like you don't do shock therapy ki suddenly you change everything you go step by step slowly and you create mechanisms you keep checking in how is everyone feeling with this change you're going to expect some productivity fallouts for those few weeks or months so i think a good process is where you're aware as i said like suffering pain issues that's not going to go away it's about how you manage that process of change yeah so while you making check ins how do you bring that psychological safety so that we express our intention of building collaborative team not as a micromanaging to trust building it's very okay. like trust is you can't fake trust and you can't you can say things but you can't fake as i said there's a truth right and people feel it there's energy so agar aap you know for your own benefit apne fayde ke liye you're going to just start changing things people will feel it some people will be charmed by your charisma initially but eventually they will know what your intention is obviously that doesn't mean you're hyper vigilant and you stop taking action because sometimes like so i i care a lot about ethics and sometimes that can make me freeze ki oh what if i do this and it's the wrong thing and it will hurt xyz um but that doesn't mean you don't take action so you have to take action you have to ask yourself what is my intention here and you have to best communicate that and if that's not being communicated that means there is a gap in trust and then you ask yourself have i done my best to gain trust and if the answer is yes but you still haven't gained trust then it's on them and then there there's possibly going to be some conflict but it doesn't have to be huge it can just be a little bit of irritation some energy up and down but if you know in your heart that you have the right intention they will eventually feel it it will come to them in a dream or they will one day wake up and realize okay this person means means well um so so it doesn't have to uh, be you know dramatic but yeah communication and trust is how you do that many times i see people they were telling like keep personal life and professional life separate but i see emotions will just flow even though if you are in office we will be keep thinking of personal life when you are in personal life even on vacation people will be keep thinking of what is happened in office and all so what is your thought on that i feel so uh, i i don't know cuz i haven't found that balance for myself i think these are very theoretical things and it depends on what situation you're in for example when i graduated i stopped socializing the way i used to i stopped hanging out for fun i would only do it when i really needed to take breaks and rest because i had to figure out my future i had to figure out my career because the way i wanted to do things was very different i didn't just want a 9 to 5 job even if it's a great job i just had a different idea of what i wanted because i had certain priorities so that year my social life took a complete step back but still i ended up meeting people who were also making transitions who were also say into music or whatever so i ended up making new friends that's an example so i'm saying at different points in your life your priorities will be different at one point when your work is stable and things are chill there that means you'll spend more time with your friends go on dates or explore that side of yourself so the work life balance thing i think that's what you're talking about it's subjective sometimes you don't have work life balance like i did not for the first year or two of college and that was a choice because i needed to get shit done and after things stabilize as i like, okay i'm ready to be you know to make more friends or to be have closer relationships i went in i had hard breaks i had issues there and i was like okay back to work now I'm like but i don't feel as productive cuz i'm in a low state so things are in a flux now what i do is um, to have that balance is because you know in this time a lot of friends are like moving abroad moving to different cities for college for work so i have to ask myself who is available around me 
who are the friends i have here who i can meet and i make sure i meet at least twice a week like different friends i have to for my well being because you need that social you know especially in the pandemic um so that's my way of ensuring that i'm not in my shell because i know it's not healthy for me i've done it for a long time but i also don't want to lose balance and just socialize i've done that also for a year when i'm just out there so your balance is your body your consciousness your priorities especially like if you don't have a job you don't have money you can't think of work life balance you only have to think of work if you're overworked you're not happy you have to think of who matters to you and bring them closer but you shouldn't reach that stage also yeah like you need to one needs to plan ahead which is yeah so it's about priorities nice so what what attracted you towards conflict resolution you mentioned brief about this in the initial so why did you yeah. get interested uh so in college uh, i went to a lot of drama there was a debating club which was uh, just male majority boys and uh, male dominated and they were like bullies they were very right wing and i did a whole paper on this also later on the student government but they were bullies and they would they i had a lot of love affair with them basically and in general my college environment felt very cold to me i didn't feel like people were very warm or kind so after going through some suffering i uh, through my buddhist practice also there's a phrase that goes stand alone spirit and about how you know being a one person army is okay by me and i have to stick to what i think is right etc so i finally started speaking up to these bullies and this sounds like a very middle school thing also but this is actually a college politics it even in adult life there are bullies so if people assume that those things are you know gone that's good for you but i encounter drama which is i guess my way of growth so um through my you know buddhist chanting and all i gained the courage to speak up to these people to stand up for myself and the problem was that the issues we had could have been considered too awkward for me to talk about like there was someone i dated for a brief period then he joined these enemies and you know, so just drama and and because they're all boys like you all you feel very cornered so i was like why am i what am i ashamed of what am i afraid of and i was like i have to confront these people but then i was scared if i confront this person then there are these two other people jin se aur lafra so it was complicated so i made a chart a multi stakeholder conflict type chart that here is me this is my interest this is my need this is my what i'm looking for these are the five people with whom i have lafra um you know they have messed with me how do i want to confront them and what is the what is it that went wrong so after writing down this is my issue with them i'm not and then writing my boundary that this is not going to continue i'm going to tell them on their face that i don't care who you think you are and you know this is my thing so i i wrote it down and then i didn't do it for two or three months and then one day i had the courage one day like i saw this person in the canteen mess and i was like today i'm doing this and you know these things are when an, so i have realized an act of courage takes preparation but the day you actually get the courage to do it it's spontaneous that day is when it comes from within so i confronted this guy and i was like you know i know i did this and i'm sorry about that but there's no way that you took this as a way to be so mean to me over the last two years and you spoke with me like this and this is not okay by me and there were other ways to address this and then he told me that okay here something you did that really hurt me and i wanted to get back at you and i'm sorry maybe the way i did it was not right but um you know so so we had and then i fought a little fought as in i took it out and i said and i said and those other two people call them i'm not even scared of them you know i had so much courage all of a sudden because i realized that i am an equal uh stakeholder in this environment why should i avoid going to class or avoid certain faces cuz wo log wahan hai and i feel nervous they should be sitting inside they should be avoiding me cuz they're scared of me or nobody should be scared of each other so that day when i showed courage this guy and i resolved our thing even though i was not fully okay with it i was like this is a step then over time we were in the same classes and um i chose a topic for my research 
around the student government and gender and i started doing my research and all the professor said you have to even interview this political party the one that you know has caused all this drama i'm not talking to them and my professor said what do you mean this is your research you have to so that's why i believe in you know the universe and all that my professor said like, you have to interview these people so then i had to go and approach them again and be like this is for my assignment okay and i kid you not these people were so kind and they had totally transformed in these four years and they're like you know we made a big mistake by joining that party and the person we were following is completely crazy and they went through their own share of extreme suffering that eventually led them to change and really transform and be so apologetic and express their regrets in those interviews that yeah this party ye ye hua cuz my i was interviewing people from you know women in the student government who had been who had faced sexism now i'm interviewing the people who had formed the foundation for so much sexism this very right wing and now these people had changed not all of them the ones i had issues with so i felt really great that you know this transformation had happened and then i can think that ye maine kiya hai but i know ye maine nahi kiya because they went through their suffering that means they had their relationships and their issues through which life showed them that this is wrong right so yeah so uh, basically that uh, journey of uh and also my 12th grade syllabus of the cold war really helped because when i had to confront them there were factions that there were these three people who i had issues with there were these other two three people who were their enemies who i also had issues with and i was like okay who do i what do i do and i was like okay let me think of this us this this group let me think of this group as ussr and let me look at myself as non aligned and i'm getting bullied in this you know like the soviet union uh, cold war like triangle of issues so i was like let me try to see it in this way and that was very empowering so using this model from international relations and my buddhist practice um i was like wow like i actually stood up for myself so so yeah that was pretty great i even shared that at a buddhism meeting um and yeah that felt good so that that was my first encounter with proper conflict resolution you mentioned you were doing the future of the world even before the pandemic can you throw some more light on this even before the pandemic basically um when i graduated from college i was very adamant that i wanted to pursue music but i didn't want to give up or let go of you know the research academia or professional world also so i had a question how do i do both because um i needed to learn music from scratch i needed to earn but i was also burnt out i didn't want to work in an office i had my tantrums so uh i just wrote down what are the three things or the four things i really want out of a job and one was okay i want to make x amount of money per month i want to work x amount of time per week so i don't want to work more than 20 hours and i want to make this much money so i i put that energy out there that i need to do a job that i need these things and it's meaningful it's purposeful in what i do so i made a network capital post i think in of july 2019 saying hi these are the internships i've done and these are my skills i'm looking for a job that is these many hours i'm looking for remote flexible work which is meaningful and i i mean it's be- it's beautiful how it worked out um the person who first person who commented priya my first boss long term or for that though that one year by boss priya she had built a product called fieldscope which is a remote work platform for the development sector which is perfect it perfectly aligns with my vision and it enables researchers to collaborate professionals to collaborate remotely in flexible ways and she is in bangalore i've never met her but she has been a great mentor to me so for that year i worked with fieldscope and that was like maybe 10 15 hours a week 20 hours a week uh, which is quite flexible i was doing my dj classes alongside i took up another job at belong as a community uh, curator sort of um, so they built a thing on diversity and inclusion that was a new startup and again the person who ran it is extremely inspirational he's a partner at dalberg one of the most 
well known development consulting firms so i got very lucky i mean i keep saying luck i know i worked hard for it as well uh the field, the belong gig was short lived because i realized i wanted to do research work whereas there i was organizing events which is something i did a lot in college but now i'm not in college anymore i was like my event thing comes from music and right now it's about growing and you know technical skills and everything so then i took up research internships and i kid you not i didn't even because when you want a job or an internship you can't tell them your terms that i want to work these many hours give me this much money they don't care you want them so a lot of it is about demand supply vantage point and who is the more needy person i was needy that i need to do research and as luck could have it these organizations where i interned they gave me only part time internship so i got lucky i was willing to leave other so every time i determined that i want this and i'm willing to leave other things for it but i would like it if it turned out the other way it turned out the other way so i ended up attracting these things and i was very sure i didn't want to work in an office full time because as i said i'm sensitive i take on people's energy i had had enough interaction socializing drama in college i just wanted to focus on my goals right now so for that space that mental space it was important for me to not travel to office every day and go in those things because then i can't put this energy to my music or to what i what i mat- what matters to me so obviously my friends family were like aise thodi hota hai full time job hi to hota hai main but ho gaya mera so i was happy ki i was able to work in my own way priya was the person who introduced me to the concept of future of work so i was like oh this is what i want okay like i had a nudge i had a feel nudge carry on instinct ki yahi hai to confirm ho gaya okay acha aise hota hai then um one day i had this intuition that you know this future like it's so important environmentally it's sustainable it's so good for mental health like because when your work is flexible you you have more accountability and basically in an office this hierarchy of a manager screaming at you to get things done I don't think that's real work because work is like it's also about passion and if you care about it and if you want to make a living you do it and you want to be you don't want to be treated like a child at work. So a lot of ideas came to me which then I later realized these have been studied and Professor Prithviraj Chaudhary later I attended one of his talks he's been researching work from anywhere for many years he's at Harvard Business School and my interview with him gets published today where I interviewed him for behavioral scientist. So yeah that basically i also realized you know through college and through a lot of shit that what i want or what i'm thinking my intuition is correct just trust it even if the whole world doesn't believe you that's what is a stand alone spirit i had that with music also because when i wanted to do music like obviously my parents were like what the hell you do su- go to such an expensive college and now you want to do music like we're not going to like it's not easy and especially as a woman who wants to be a dj and there were a lot of issues there so i was like just trust your voice and just just go with it i'll figure it out so that courage has dd really rewarded me putting it down that this is what i want and then letting it happen that surrender has been beautiful as i said spirituality a lot of it has been about getting what i want without going like by letting it go also and also determining that i'm willing to do what it takes to get it so uh, so yeah i think the last two years have been really rewarding really growth strengthening and uh, i i really hope that continues and i get back into my energy levels and yeah that's been the future of work stuff for me and then the when the pandemic happened i was like dude i'd been saying this for so long like now it's finally happening one thing i understood is you have lots of gratitude within you and you beautifully brought that point where you have to trust your intuition even the whole universe doesn't believe in you thank you for those words what else would you like to share across the world uh, it's all lived experience right so i think what i'd say to the world is uh, and this is something i tell myself you know i i'm someone who uh, who gets very scared like uncertainty i know it i take bold risks but i feel scared quite often and then i look for reassurance i ask my mom i ask my sister i'm going to google things and i'm like okay what 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 and i think the best way to know is to do it right so um as you said people they don't go after what they want they don't know what they want 
for a long time people called me that that i had no clarity when i was in college people like what do you want to do like i would get scolded i was pitching for a startup and they're like you don't know what is this full time i said no it's a quarter time thing and they're like no we're not i didn't make it so i've really been there and i'm in a new problem now so so what i'd like to tell the world is one if you have even the slightest spark of fire for something say music or comedy or accounts whatever you like even if it's a little spark do keep reading on it fall if you if it's too much effort you're lazy follow instagram pages on that thing follow twitter pages or if you're watching tv like watch a show about it do it in a fun way but like keep engaging with it that's one because if you want to attract stuff you have to be in that vibrant vibration and frequency as i say so if i want to be attracting gigs in research and conflict and all i better be following those pages on twitter i better be adding everyone on linkedin i better be reading about it because i have a spark so one is follow that spark and make your environment about that that's how you attract it to your mind will always tell you ye nahi ho sakta and this is too hard i don't deserve this i'm not good enough my education is not good enough my grades my family income my background my class my caste so many limited beliefs will always come to your mind don't answer them don't talk to them because or people say fight your thinking like just don't need you don't need to talk to your thinking because your thinking is protecting you which is good but keep going anyway i had so many doubts last year when the lockdown began i i lost all three of my contracts okay all three at once and i was like what the hell like i worked so hard to gain this and then i just waited 6 months in i had the dream literally the dream professionally um so my limited mind was always telling me nahi hoga kya hoga cuz i wanted to work more and you know i thought i'll start working full time and the uh, pandemic made hiring frozen like hiring was frozen for those 3 4 months but if that hiring was not frozen pandemic was not frozen today i probably won't be interning at behavioral scientist or working with polyl so the storm led me to the right destination so i i had i didn't have a choice i had to trust that storm that's so the second thing i would tell the world is whatever shit you're going through your limited mind will keep telling you yeah yoga won't yoga just keep going and follow your spark that's it don't keep going random you have to keep going with the spark of what you want to attract and do and the third thing is please ask for help when you're stuck and if you're struggling reach out identify struggle kis cheez mein hai if the struggle is in a relationship Uh, who do you trust with relationships ask them if you're struggling with work who do you look at as mentors talk to them if you're stuck with mental health go to a therapist take medication do what it takes it's okay um so always recognize your needs if you're struggling and we're always struggling all of us we need to be able to ask for what we want because if we don't ask we'll keep it to ourselves we'll take it out on others we we'll, we won't be able to get out of it so yeah follow your spark don't believe your limited uh, beliefs don't talk to them just keep going and then when you actually get what you want your limited belief will get proved wrong so then it'll stop on its own and the third thing is ask for help when you need it wow the best way to know anything is to do it really like your words thank you for coming to the show